ほう、いよいよ白神街の殺し屋、カミソリ・リュウジの登場街。仲良くやりましょうや、ミッタン。わいら親を取られてまんので、そのようたらいう殺し屋にきっちり落とし前つけんと、白神街は終わりですよってな。おなごをさらって吐かせますよって。警察では使えんてもわいらなら使えますよ。あさってお前らの東京支部へ顔を出すわお待ちしてな夜明けにさらいえい、ー、You want permanent residency in Japan? Well let's get into it Yeah buddy What is permanent residency and why does it matter to foreigners who want to live in Japan? Well, permanent residency is basically it's a type of visa like no other visa. Basically, there's no limitations on it once you get it. You're almost a borderline citizen. But、uh, again, it's a little too loud, so let's go somewhere a little bit more quiet and talk about this in depth.、Uh, so, anyway, thanks for stepping into my office. It's a lot quieter in here. What are some myths about? Permanent residency. What's true, what's not? Let's get into it. So, what are some myths behind permanent residency in Japan?、Oh. One of those myths is that you need to have been here for 10 years. Total lie. Another myth you have to be married to get it quickly. Another lie. Another myth is that you need to be making a lot of money. First off, you need a lawyer. This is bullshit. Now, take in mind if you are working freelance, that is probably better if you hire yourself an accountant. Anyways, there's lots of benefits to becoming a permanent resident, which practically means that you're, that you're pretty much a citizen without being a citizen. Anyway, let's get into the myths about getting permanent residency in Japan. There's a language test. There wasn't a language test for me. But then again, I do speak Japanese and I've been a translator for about three plus years. So that was probably one of the reasons why, possibly, but not that I can think of off the top of my head. You can't have had any problems with the law, including parking tickets or speeding tickets. That is bullshit. I've had my driver's license suspended four times in Japan and probably issued over 20 tickets since I've been in Japan. Hey! I'm not, a bad, I'm not a good boy, but at the same time, that didn't affect my results, what's, none whatsoever. Probably the most most commonly represented one is that you need a lawyer to get permanent residency. Now, unless you have a special case or whatever, you might possibly need a lawyer. But if you're just a normal working stiff like myself, you don't need one at all. You just go on the internet like I did. So, what are the benefits of having permanent residency? Well, one, you can literally do whatever job you want, ever. It doesn't matter. You can work as a construction worker, you can work as a pediatrician, whatever. You, there's no limit. You could even be a hooker on permanent residency, I'm pretty sure. So, you can't vote, but that's only for national elections. When it comes to little town elections or whatever, if you're a permanent resident, usually they don't give a fuck.、Um, also, you can be approved for bank loans a lot more easily if you have permanent residency here. I believe the thing is that if you want to get a bank loan, you still have to produce about 10% of the overall bank loan as a deposit. But if you're a foreigner without permanent residency, you have to put down 80% of that. Another fun little added benefit is that when you come back to Japan through the airport, you get to go in a shorter,、uh, smaller line through immigration that will bridge you through. That one's really nice too. Guys, let's break down necessarily what the whole visa and permanent residency situation is here in a way that I like to describe it, which is the Sam's Dragon Ball Z visa analogy. Yeah, it's a little long, but anyway, let's get down to it. You're going to love this. Trust me, what you're seeing now is my normal state. First level, I would say, is normal Super Saiyan. Basically, you're strong, you're tough, you came from a foreign country, you already show that you're a badass, but 
You can only stay here for three months. You're limited. You can go to the battlefield, but you're not going to last more than three seconds. So with the tourist visa, basically, you can come here for three months. You can stay. You can hang out. But you can't work. This is a Super Saiyan. So then you become a Super Saiyan. Super Saiyan I would classify as a worker. You can officially work in Japan now. You have a working visa. Congratulations. Yeah. But see, so now you're strong enough to take on Frieza, which is the Immigration Bureau. So basically you're able to fight Frieza, the Immigration Bureau, and now you can stay technically in Japan for a certain amount of time. Keep in mind though that this is limiting, and the whole reason that it's limiting is because if you want to change jobs or you want to do a different job, you have to change visas each time. So you're still going to have to go back and fight Frieza each time you want to do something different. So even though you're one step over normal sand, you're still very limited. And this... This is what is known as a Super Saiyan that has ascended past a Super Saiyan. Or, you could just call this a Super Saiyan 2. On to what the current topic of this video is. Super Saiyan Level 2, or what I would say, Permanent Residency. Now, Permanent Residency is great. You can play real Super Saiyan 2. You are way stronger than everybody else on the battlefield now. While everyone else is getting their ass kicked or barely beating Frieza, you kick Frieza's ass. You don't need to go see him for the next seven years. And even when you do, it's just signing a form and just putting it out. That's all you gotta do. You can now work wherever you want. You can now have plenty more options. You are strong as shit. You are Super Saiyan level two. That leads me to the bonus round. You didn't think there would be a bonus round now, did ya? Now this bonus round is called Super Saiyan Level 3, Citizenship. Now, with great power, in order to obtain great power, you must have some sort of sacrifice. Now this is what I call Super Saiyan Level 3. Just like in Dragon Ball Z, in order to become Super Saiyan 3, you have to give up an extreme amount of power and you only have a short amount of time to use it. So, in a way that you, you are more powerful than anybody else on the battlefield, but you had to sacrifice something. Now, if you become a Japanese citizen, you have full-fledged power. They can never kick you out. You can vote and you can change the fucking world for your little speck of information. You can have a lot more options as a Japanese citizen. Probably you have more options and more power than anybody else on the battlefield. But in order to get that, you had to sacrifice your time and your energy, aka your original passport. It's unfortunate. That's why it's called Super Saiyan Level 3 and Bonus Round. You don't have to obtain it. Sure, you might be able to get by with Super Saiyan Level 2, and that's good enough, but some people want to go for the bonus round, and they will go for Super Saiyan Level 3. Oh, let's talk about how exactly do you get permanent residency. What are the steps, where do you need to go, and what are the documents you need. Let's get to it. Boom! You're probably asking yourself, well Sam, we already know what permanent residency is. Well, why don't you tell us finally how we get it. Well, okay, let's, let's jump into it. Costume change, yay! Like any kind of visa application here in Japan, you're going to have to up submit paperwork. This is the whole part of bureaucracy. And Japan loves bureaucracy. So, basically there's way too many documents to actually write down or tell you guys here. So I'm gonna give you guys a five second pause so you can see all the documents right here. All of that information is going to be down in the description down there, so check it out after the video is done. And uh, let's get back into the next thing. Despite all the paperwork, I want just to tell everybody here that it's not that much paperwork. Sure, you have to go to a couple of different places, but in the whole grand scheme of things, I've had to pick up more fucking paperwork to go get a fucking physical than have to go and apply for permanent residency. Basically, what you're gonna need here is you're gonna have to go to four different places, okay? Now, there might be a bonus one, but let's get into that. The four places that you're going to have to go to to collect that paperwork that you need to submit for permanent residency is one, it's going to be your local city hall, two, it's going to be from your employer, three, going to be from your bank, four, to actually submit the paperwork to your bank, and the fifth will be 
to go and actually talk to your guarantor, which that's going to be well next. Mm. Okay, so let's talk about what kind of guarantor do you need. I gotta be kind of quiet because I'm inside a convenience store. So this is probably the most important thing that you're going to need, so fucking pay attention, okay? When you get all your paperwork, when you're already about to go to immigration, you need to have a Japanese guarantor. Now in Japan, Japan's kind of a, company, a country that is based on bureaucracy, and one of the things about bureaucracy is you always have somebody who gets your back either street cred or money-wise. Immigration is no different. If you check their website, they say that anybody can be your sponsor for your visa or your permanent residency. When you're working, it's your company who is your sponsor, who is your hoshonin, basically. Your guarantor saying that if you fuck up, it's their responsibility. When you get permanent residency, that's not the case, okay? With permanent residency, you need to show that you have somebody who is a stable, you know, good, hearty citizen that is going to get your back in case shit hits the fan. Rarely do they ever actually have to get your back, and rarely does this paperwork ever come into effect, but you're going to need this person to sign off on your paperwork if you want to get PR in Japan. This means that this person, now they said on the immigration website it could be a foreigner who has permanent residency, but unless that person is like really, really, really like I'd say pro a professional, like either they're a doctor or a university professor or they're president of their own company, I wouldn't recommend having a foreigner be your guarantor because you want to project, of course, that you're stable in Japan and that you've assimilated and that you have plenty of Japanese friends. And this is the most important part. You can't use just normal Japanese friends. Remember, you're trying to project stability. So, in order to do that to the best of your degree, you need somebody who is Japanese, who's worked as a good worker, who has like a stable job, you know, more better if they have a family, and that they've more importantly paid their taxes. Now, this is the most important thing, guys. Now, you know, there's probably, you might have some friends that are Japanese that are your same age or whatever that could be your guarantor, but Japan wants to know that you kind of have like a father or mother figure that's going to get your back in case shit hits the fan. Now, this is going to, you're going to have to pry kind of into their lives, and that's why where a lot of Japanese people stop and they say, no, I don't want to help you because in order to submit this document, you're going to need that person, the whole Hoshonians, you're going to need their bank statements showing how much money they have in their bank. You're going to have to show their tax slips saying how much money they paid in taxes. Now, I don't know about you or if you know Japan that well, but a lot of people are very kind of concerned about giving away their personal information all the time. So you need to find somebody who you're really good and close in with that, like I said, has shown that they've led a very stable life, that they've contributed to society in some way, and that they, you know, that they're just normal 2.5 picket fence kind of person. For me, it was a Japanese guy named Ishihara that I met a long time ago when I lived in Chiba. I've known him about nine years. Uh, he has his own construction company in Chiba. He has a family, he's got grandkids. Actually, his granddaughter married an American, so that's how I know him. Awesome dude, he's been around the world and basically he's known me for a long time. And luckily, he was one of those cool dudes who doesn't care about sharing that kind of information because he wanted me to stay in Japan. So you guys need to find a guarantor like that. What's next? So I am here in a traditional Japanese neighborhood right now. Why? This totally fits with the theme for this part of the video called stability. And stuff that you really need to prepare that's going to take you a long time to actually prepare it, okay? Paperwork, you can get paperwork. You can get that anytime. That's not a big deal. But there's things that if you're really seriously considering getting permanent residency that you should plan ahead for and definitely, you know, get your money ready for it. I'd like to go by basically the rules of three when it comes to showing that you are basically a stable person. Because see, in Japan for permanent residency, unless you're a very rich person or unless you've contributed to Japan in the population side of things you're gonna have to prove at least that you're a stable person that deserves having long-term visa to this country one of the things that I like to say is that it's the rule of three okay rule of three is simple so I think that you should have at least lived, if you can help it, live in the same place for at least three years. Why? It shows that you don't bounce around a lot, that you stay at one place. See, that's the thing, it's like, I, I, these are not my personal beliefs, but this is one thing I've learned with dealing with the bureaucracy in Japan over all this time, is that bureaucrats want you to follow the rules, but only till the certain point. Then after that, they don't give a shit. And it's just like real life, where it's like, people are people, and people who work are generally lazy. Even in Japan, people are lazy. So 
I go by the rule of three, which is live in the same place for three years. Why? Because this way you don't have to bounce around to other city halls to grab that fucking paperwork for your taxes and shit, but also it shows that you've been somewhere and you're, you don't move around a lot. You're a very serious person. Also, rule of three, you should have worked at the same place for three years if you can help it. I think that shows, again, stability, that you're a very good, safe person, that you just, like, you don't want to live a quiet life and whatever. And this next one, it's not really a rule of three, but I think you should save for at least three years of your money so at least you have $10,000 in the bank. Now this is a given, but trust me, you'd be surprised on how many guys and I have met in this country that do not have a, any fucking savings. Uh, when I applied for a permanent residency, I had been working at the same company for at least two years straight. I had moved twice, but luckily it was okay because I lived in the other house for at least two years or something before that. And then also I had about $10,000, $12,000 in savings when I applied. These are things that you really have to go out of your way to prepare way ahead of time of act before like actually applying for this shit as same as getting a guarantor but not that you should just be friends with people so they'll give you that they'll be a good fucking you know guarantor for you down the line but going out of your way to make friends with people who do have that kind of street cred so to speak in Japan that have that kind of status that will help you out they're long-term things that you really should consider before you even apply for permanent residency so everybody thank you all for coming here and checking out this video just to summarize what the hell we've been talking about we have we talked about today we talked about the myths we talked about busting the myths when it came to permanent residency we talked about the benefits of getting permanent residency we talked about what exactly permanent residency is and how it's different from other visas we talked about what kind of paperwork you need and where you need to go to get that fucking paperwork we talked about the, your guarantor, how you got to get a guarantor for your permanent residency visa. And then finally, we talked about projecting an image of stability and standard white man good old John Smithiness. So thank you all for watching till the end of this video. I know it was a long one, but hopefully it was informative and fun and all kinds of sex for you guys. If you enjoyed watching this video, please do me a very big favor and smash that like button. I'm challenging you guys right now. Can we please get Smash that fucking like button. Let's get this up to at least 200 likes. Can we do that? 200 likes for this video. Also, if you thought this was informative, please feel free to share it with people who you think that live in Japan that could benefit from using this knowledge that I fucking Kai Lopez the shit out of this stuff. Also, if you would like to help support me on a smaller, hardcore level, sign up for my Tikyo Sam newsletter where I send it out once a month about just stuff that happened on YouTube. Check it out right here. Boom, 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 boom. Also, I made videos like this thanks to the help of viewers like you. If you'd like to help support me even more, I have a Patreon site where you can get many different rewards, including reading a weekly blog, behind the scenes footage, I even send you some stuff from Japan depending on the rewards. Go ahead, check it out right there, over there, down at the bottom. Also, if you guys like my gaming channel and you would like to help me out on that front, please check out my Amazon wish list down at the bottom. It also has some YouTube equipment down there as well. So wait a second. You're probably thinking, Hey, wait there a second, Tico Sam. What's up, you punk ass bitch motherfucker? You didn't talk about how you got permanent residency. Well, I guess everyone's gonna have to wait until next week's Wednesday video. I'm Tico Sam. Thanks for watching, and you all stay black. Yeah, buddy. Woo!